Welcome to Peace Lutheran Church here in Plainfield, Illinois, as we celebrate this sixth Sunday of Easter. We realize that God does indeed love all people. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection, we have the forgiveness of sins. Unfortunately, not everyone wants this forgiveness of sins. So while God gives it freely to all people, not all people will be saved. We'll hear more about this in our first reading for today and how we should be continuing to hang on to this Christian faith, gather around God's word so that we do not allow sin to push us away from the grace that comes from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Gracious God, in heartfelt repentance, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We are sin-stained people by nature. Each day we have sinned and done things we ought not to have done, and have not done that which we are to have been doing as your servants. We have not seen people in the loving way that you see them. We have not always been ready to care and quick to help. We do indeed deserve your punishment in this life and for eternity. Trusting in your mercy, we come to you for forgiveness. Our trust is in the merits of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us, O God. Grant us forgiveness of all our sins and by the power of the Holy Spirit at work within our hearts and lives, lead us into ways that reflect your goodness and love. 
God is loving and merciful. He sees us with loving eyes and graciously hears our supplications. By the command of our Lord, and as his called and ordained servant, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 10. Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee, after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us, who had been chosen by God as witnesses who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed, because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speak in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people? who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from 1 John chapter 5, beginning with the first verse. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world our faith. Who it is that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. For these are three that testify, the Spirit and the water, and the blood. And these three agree. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. 
These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Are you who, who walk in sorrow down ye may's barren road? Hearts distraught and hope defeated, bent beneath grief's crushing load. Nameless mourners, we will join you. We who also mourn your dead, we have stood by graves unyielding, eaten despair, bitter bread. Who are you? Ah, hearts are opened. In the breaking of the bread, Christ the victim, now the victor, living, risen from the dead. Great companion on our journey, still surprise us with your grace. Make each day a new Emmaus on our hearts your image trace. Who are we who, who travel with you on our way through life to death? Women, men, the young, the aging, waken by the Spirit's breath. At the font you claimed and name us, born of water and the wood. At the table still you feed us, host us as our risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, is the Easter hymn we sing. Take our life, our joy, our worship, as the gift of love we bring. 
You have formed us all one people, called from every land and race. Make the church your servant body, sent to share your healing grace. God's grace and his peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The title of this message is that God welcomes all. Let's first start with our reading from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 34. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. So God shows no partiality, all because of the atonement of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Because when Jesus dies on the cross, you could say, God welcomes all people. Why? Because all sin of humanity is put upon Jesus, and Jesus atones, that is, pays the price for that sin. It's interesting, very often when you have uh, brothers and sisters, there might be a debate amongst them whom their father or mother loves more. In this case, however, amongst us as Christians, there should be no debate. Our Heavenly Father loves all of us perfectly, the same. God cannot love you anymore, and God will not love you any less. Your sins are completely forgiven. It's interesting, however, often I sometimes will see a church sign and the sign will say, all are welcomed. Well, in one essence, God does welcome all people. Amen to that. But you may notice that verse 34 ends with a comma and continues into verse 35, which somewhat qualifies this welcoming. What was verse 35 again? But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. So what is this qualification? This qualification is that you have to believe and trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior from sin. The one who defeats sin, death, and the devil. Is that important? The answer is yes, because if you don't realize you're a sinner, you have no need for Jesus. So when we see a church sign that says all are welcome, they should put a little asterisk after that with a disclaimer, because Jesus dies on the cross for the forgiveness of sins. So all of humanity has to understand that their sins are forgiven. However, they also can choose to reject this beautiful gift of Christ. How do they reject it? By not realizing that they're a sinner and need the salvation that Christ alone gives. People are forgiven, and we call that universal atonement, that atonement that sin is forgiven, it's paid for. But not everyone is going to be with Christ in heaven above. You may remember there were two thieves being crucified with Jesus when he died, one on the left and one on the right. And it was only to one of them that Jesus said in Luke chapter 23, verse 43, Jesus said to him, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. One thief went to paradise and one didn't. So while there is universal atonement, there isn't universalism, which means everyone goes to heaven. So people can reject this gift of forgiveness of sins. And how do people reject the forgiveness of sins? What does that look like? That basically looks like somebody saying, I am not a sinner. Or maybe 
they have a certain part of their lives that they don't want to admit is sinful. When the Bible states something is a sin and the person states that it isn't a sin, notice the conflict. God wants you to realize your sin. And by the way, what does God do when you realize your sin? Does God punish you? The answer is no. God welcomes you. He stretches his arms open wide upon Calvary's cross and wraps those arms, those hands that were bleeding because of the nail marks around you and embraces you with forgiveness. But notice those open arms come through Calvary's cross when he dies on the cross for the forgiveness of your sin. So how does Jesus welcome you? By you realizing that you are a sinner and you need Jesus to go to the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. In today's world, however, I will admit there's a lot of churches that don't want to focus upon sin. They're afraid that people will be offended. However, when they don't teach about sin and about their sin, they're really not teaching about Jesus. Because Jesus does what? He dies on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. So a good example of this is recently in our history and even modern day history today, you find people who for some reason go looting around stores. They steal stuff from stores, they break into stores, they acquire things, but yet the Bible clearly states in Exodus chapter 20, verse 15, you shall not steal. Does that stop them? No. And very often they justify it in the back of their minds, well, everyone else is doing it, or I deserve this stuff, or even worse, maybe the Bible is wrong and antiquated. Now, does God forgive them? Of course. There is forgiveness through the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But are they wanting that forgiveness? Again, the answer is no. Otherwise, why would they be delighting in the looting of the stores? So when people self-justify themselves and they don't confess their sins, they are basically saying to Jesus and to God the Father, I do not want the forgiveness that comes from Jesus. I don't want to be welcomed with the arms extended wide on Calvary's cross because I don't need a Savior to deliver me from my sin because I don't have sin. That's what they're saying. So the law of God that says in Exodus chapter 20, verse 15, you shall not steal, is designed to show us that we are sinners and that we need a Savior. You might be thinking, okay, Pastor, but I haven't rooted, looted any stores recently. Well, fair enough, but there are other sins that we still commit. What about the sin of gossip? You know, spreading rumors. Or even if you know it's a fact, does it make the other person look bad? If so, God asks us not to do those things. What about worry? That's a big one that we love in today's world. We like to worry about tomorrow, but yet do we not understand we have a God that loves you and takes care of you and gives you your daily bread so you have nothing to worry about, which is then closely related to coveting, desiring something you don't have that God hasn't given to you? Yes, when we go through the commandments, we quickly realize that we have fallen short of those sins, with those commandments, and have sinned. So what should we do when we realize we come to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we ask for forgiveness? It's interesting in our reading for today from Acts chapter 10 that Peter is the one that is saying this. Peter is the one that is saying that God shows no partiality. And Peter himself should know because 
He himself denied Jesus three times after Jesus was arrested. But yet, he also experienced the grace of God, the forgiveness of sins, and that grace felt good. And he enjoyed that grace, and now he is wanting to share that grace. I had a similar incident when I was in seminary. It wasn't quite as bad as Peter as denying our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but a sin is a sin. And so I remember sitting before the Dean of Students at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis, and he had to remind me of my sin. And what was my first reaction? My first reaction out of scare, being completely scared was to fess up, you're right, I have sinned. What do I need to do to change? And he just sort of smiled at me. He gave me Christ's forgiveness. But I will admit, even after I left his office, I was still a little shaken. I was still a little uneasy. But the Lord has a very good sense of humor and certainly allows certain things to come into our lives, even though we didn't realize that God has kind of planned this all along. So what happened right after that? It was a Monday. Came time for Wednesday, we had our weekly chapel service with the celebration of the Lord's Supper. And so as I come forward, guess who was there to hand me the body of Christ with that bread? The Dean of Students, who reminded me, take, eat, this is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. I will admit at that time that bread and wine tasted so good because I was absolutely assured because here is Jesus. I heard his words in the office, but now when I got to receive Jesus, body and blood, bread and wine, I enjoyed that forgiveness of sin. And so this is what Peter is trying to teach us. Not to cover up our sins, not to hide our sins, but to come to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for forgiveness. Likewise, if there are any sins that do bother you, this is a beautiful opportunity like I did to hear from another pastor about the forgiveness of sins. Go ahead and make an appointment with me. We'll talk. And here, and I can give you some counsel and remind you of the forgiveness that comes from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Or you can also come here to Peace Lutheran Church and receive the very true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Because the key is that we enjoy that forgiveness. The key is to realize that we are welcomed by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as he spreads his arms open wide for us from Calvary's cross and embraces us with the forgiveness of sins. We are indeed welcomed. And so we come before him and we realize we have sinned, but then we also need to cherish and realize we are forgiven. Notice that the emphasis is all about the forgiveness of sins. So do we have on our church sign, all are welcomed for our church? The answer is no. One of the quips that is on our electronic sign is a saying from Martin Luther that will help us this day. And what is that saying from Martin Luther? Christ dwells only in sinners because if you do not recognize your sin then you have pushed Christ out but if you realize your sin then Christ dwells within you and for this we rejoice and are glad so we come before our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this day seeking his grace and forgiveness as God shows no partiality for God welcomes all, including you. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Now the peace of God that surpasses all our understanding will continue to guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
We confess the Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, and by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Father welcomes all his children to his family through his Son. Father giving his salvation, life forever has been won. Little children, come to me, for my kingdom is of these. Life and love I have to give, mercy for your sins. Father welcomes all his children to his family through his Son. Father giving his salvation, life forever has been won. In the water, in the wood, in his promise be assured. Those who are baptized and believe shall be born again. Father welcomes all his children to his family through his Son. Father giving his salvation Life forever has been won. Let us daily die to sin. Let us daily rise with him. Walk in the love of Christ our Lord. Live in the peace of God. Father welcomes all his children to his family through his Son. 
Father giving his salvation, life forever has been won.